Okay, thank you. Uh, well, welcome to um, our uh, May 21st uh, Fire Commissioner meeting. Uh, the agenda, we have quorum. Uh, we have Commissioner Dixon uh, with us and, um, and myself. Uh, the mayor uh, will be sh with us shortly. The first item on the agenda is acceptance of the Tuesday, April 16, 24 minutes. Uh, I move to accept the um, those minutes. Um, wait, we, we, we can't have a second. Uh, Commissioner Dixon was not here. Pro Actually, yes, you can. Uh, Commissioner, you can you can move to accept them, uh, but uh, abstain from commenting on them because you were not present. I understand. So can I get a second? Okay. Any uh, now? Any comments or corrections? Yes, Mayor, we can hear you. Okay. okay. Yeah, I'm All on right. the phone now. Okay. We're just well, going through the acceptance of the minutes. Yes, I got it. Okay. Any uh, any comments or corrections? I didn't have any. I do not. Anyone else? No, I don't have any. I wasn't there. Okay, move to accept the minutes as uh, recorded. Okay, all in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, so it's so done. Mr. Mayor, you're uh, you're on. <laughs> I'm back on. Okay. okay. So there are no, there are no action items. The next item is the fire chief's report. Chief. Okay. So we are um, ten ten months out of twelve months for the year. And if you look at the the uh, the budget report near the bottom, it shows uh, two more months to go, May and June, and we are. Uh, the good news is there's a surplus in each of the salary expenses and overtime expenses, um, but we are getting closer to the break-even point on the overtime uh, expenses. The larger account, firefighting account, uh, we are 79.5% for the overtime and 719 in the salaries. Which we knew that was going to be that way anyway because of the vacancies. And overall, we're at 73.8% versus 83.3% where you would be after uh, 10 months. So we're not doing bad for now. And we're projecting that uh, we will, which we're going to be very close uh, by the end of the year. But uh, we'll be all right. Even if you have to transfer some money, but we'll still be all right in that regard. Okay. Thank you, Chief. Any questions uh, from the commission? Uh, no questions. Uh, thank you, for Chief, and, uh, and everyone for keeping us uh, on a really good uh, surplus. Okay. So the uh, long-term injury and sick report, I just wanted to just briefly touch base on where we've been um, since the end of our the last fall into into this year regarding um members that were out without stating anybody's name or anything uh we did have one firefighter who was out for 14 months on injury on duty eventually was uh granted a disability pension there were three firefighters that were out for approximately five months on uh, injury on duty, but they have now returned. Um, one firefighter, which got hurt at the uh, bridge fire, was out on injury on duty, mm. um, waiting for an MRI. Then we have a couple of long-term injury, a long-term sickness. One of them was out um, for nine months and we're hoping that he'll be returning by the end of august another one that was out a lieutenant was out for five months on sick leave but he has returned and 
a firefighter that has been out since early April, expected to return at the end of June. And we do have our one female firefighter out on her pregnancy leave, mm -hmm. and she's expected um, to come back probably sometime in August. And we have a firefighter that was that is uh, militarily deployed, and he's been on leave since April 13, scheduled to return uh, in September. So even with 13 vacancies that we had and all these other injuries and sicknesses, um, we're still doing pretty good because our... Compared to last year at this time, our sick time is a little bit lower, starting to get lower because these guys have now come back to work. Uh, and the, the other side of the coin, the injury on duty is a little bit higher um, overall, but it's coming down every month because of the people that have come back to work. So I hope I explained it. <laughs> you understand it. Yeah, I, I think so. I mean, obviously, you've got some struggles with the vacancies, uh, plus, uh, you know, long-term injuries. Uh, the only thing you can do is uh, make sure that we stay in touch with them and have uh, their evaluations and determine when they come back. Uh, it sounds like you're doing everything you can. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Uh, thank you. For Any the... comments from the commission? Uh, no, no questions. Uh, thank you. No. Okay, that brings us to the Assistant Fire Chief of Administration. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Welcome, Commissioner Dixon. Thank you. Uh, so I got updates on a few projects, that ongoing projects. So our station alerting system, um, Commissioner Dixon, we're upgrading our whole station alerting system. That's that's basically why when, when you're in the stations, um, the tones go off, and that's how they get the calls and the boards. You'll have maps on the boards to find out where they're going on the calls. We, we've been working on that. And this is changing to an automated system, which um, basically makes dispatch go a lot lot quicker, more efficient, and they can just push a button and send out the dispatch. So we're we're nearing that completion. We're, we're actually scheduled to cut over to the new system June 10th and 11th. So we find that we uh, finished all our, our testing and hopefully that goes, but it's going well there. Um, our, for our buildings update, station one, our apparatus floor, um, we have soil testing. Our floor is um, the floor is there's some settling underneath the floor, and it's, there's a there's a lot of movement that seems to be getting worse and some cracking. So we're 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 high, we have a uh, structure. We have a geotechnical engineer and a contractor that we've cut with that we've hired, and they are going to begin testing. They'll do some test bores so we can figure out what we need to do to repair that that issue. We're going to uh, we're going to start that in June first. We're actually transferring. The funds from our station uh, five roof uh, replacement project that we did a couple of years ago, uh, we were we were under, we came in under budget on that, and so we are now transferring the funds over so we can actually pay to get the soil testing done. And we we put that we put in for that, so that should that that money will be there for Ju July first or around then. Station three for the apparatus floor, we have to replace that. Uh, Commissioner Dixon, the um, we rent that from third taxing district. They've granted us $400,000 to replace the floor, the apparatus floor, um cuz it's it, it it's it's on it's over capacity at this point and and we actually don't have clearance so we, we're we're going to be lowering the floor and actually rebuilding the the the, the floor um as soon as we can. So the RFP is actually going out. I just got word today we should be going out um pretty much momentarily and we've got a pre-bid meeting uh next week on Wednesday. So we hopefully we get some good competitive pricing and uh, next month I can report that we get a contractor that we're getting. So that project's moving forward. Um, station four, uh, I met with, I, I was contacted by Alan Lowe. Uh, we, we met and um, what we're doing now is we're, we're going to be using our, our, our funding that we were, were granted for uh, July 1st, the extra funding to obtain um, updated and a, a more comprehensive cost analysis. So we can really figure out uh, if this is going to factor in a lot of the geotechnical site uh, bore, you know, test boring, um, any, any hazardous materials that were done. Apparently they were done previously back in, I think 2012, 
but we're going to be updating all of all of the conceptual drawings that I had originally gotten, and uh, we're going to come back with a pretty comprehensive analysis on that. Uh, so more to, more to come on that. That's just that's just going to start in July, and I'll I'll circle back around once we get um, some some idea of 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 our pricing on that. And um, citywide project, we we have uh, in our capital funding beginning July first, we were uh, approved mayor approved a uh, overhead door replacement. So we're going to be replacing basically every overhead door in the city. Um, they've been repaired throughout the years, and um, this is a project we're really looking forward to doing because now we're going to have these are heavier duty doors. They're a more commercial door, and it's all upgraded um, equipment and. Um, we'll be able to really start a maintenance plan after that. I've discussed it with Hartford Overhead. They're, they're the contractor that did uh, Central and we're, so we're, we're getting them through a state contract bid. So that's going to be a, that's a, that's a funded project that I'm going to be starting hopefully in July. And um, the last funded project we have is our records management software upgrade. Um, we're, we're, we're transitioning to this uh, a new software called well newer software called First Do Records Management. What what happens is this is a this is the first total software we can we're able to do we're able to have all of our um, incident, our personnel management, our training management, our um, inspections, our, our violation reports, our permitting, everything is done in in one spot. All of our uh, maintenance programs. So now this can be done on one program and we can organize it this it should be a, a, it's going to be a huge help um the other advantage is this this software is used by all of our surrounding towns and this software it's it's the first that it's been able to do it where we can hot swap between accounts so if we go down to stanford on mutual aid we can log into their account and we can get all of their pre-plan information and all of their information and likewise they can do the same they come up into Norwalk to give us mutual aid to provide mutual aid. They can log into our account, and um, the the this this software also has the ability, which is going to be great for the Marshall Division, um, and and pre planning. This has a community connect program where um, the, uh, the community members are going to be able to log in, and you know they can put in their own building, their own uh, private dwelling information. You know we have two children, or I have a you know. That elderly person that lives on in, in on the first floor in the corner. So we, we can get that information. They can actually interact with it and they can put in all their own information. And eventually the way this, this software works is it actually is enables to, to start scheduling inspections, which will be even more efficient for the, for the inspectors, for the fire marshals to, to, to go, get out there, inspect and get everything scheduled. So we're looking forward to, to starting that process. Um, any questions? Uh, thank you. Um, I do have concern about the building for renovation. Um, I was a little dismayed to hear of the compromised uh, living conditions there when um, I guess it was said that there's mold and mildew and uh, vermin and other things that are compromising the living conditions. So we did get some ARPA funds and I'm going to be having Alan Lowe go over and take a look at what can be done over there to improve the living conditions. We can't have the firefighters living under the other under those circumstances. So yeah, yeah. Um, we we I Alan uh, contacted me. We 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 discussed that, uh, Mr. Mayor, and we're gonna we're definitely gonna go over there. We've 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 uh, really gotten ahead of a lot of those problems. We 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 actually hired a new company because I think the other uh, company that was doing uh, rodent control was not doing as good of a job. This the, the, it seems to be um, we've seemed to hopefully solve that problem. And uh, we, we actually got some roof repairs done and patches done also. So I'm going to be working with him as well. And I appreciate that. Yeah. He, he definitely okay. mentioned that. And uh, that's going to be all part of this that we're going to, we're going to do anything that needs to be addressed immediately. He's going to, he's going to work on that as well with me. Okay. Very good. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Oh, thank you, ahead, Mr. Sorry. Mayor, for raising that important point. It's, it is something that, uh, that helps us to uh, to make our decisions as to how to manage the, you know, this this entire project that we have, and and make sure that our fire personnel do not get uh, sick unnecessarily. Uh, right. Really, really appreciate hearing that. Very good. Any commissioner uh, Commissioner Dixon? Any uh, questions or comments? No, not at all. I was just a little curious if there's anything uh, in the general vicinity that would. Uh 
I guess propagate is the best way to say it. The vermin that you're talking about, mm. dead animals, uh, you know, stuff like that is, tends to bring mice and rats into the environment. Yeah. Yeah. I don't, I don't know. Cause I heard they were up in the ceiling or something. Oh, wow. Yeah. We, we, this company that we just contracted actually goes in, they, they go and look for entrance points. The other company was more of a, I guess there's different grades. It's more of a trap company. You know, I mean, more of a put out put out bait company. I should say this yeah, company was a little bit more aggressive. And I think I I talk to the the, the you know personnel there regularly, and uh, my reports have been all good that they haven't had any any issues lately. So that's we seem to be ahead of it right now. Excellent. Okay, that sounds good. We'll yes. see what other things we can do uh, mm -hmm. to make sure that the living conditions are improved upon. Thank okay. You. Thank so you. that brings us. Uh, just keep us posted there, on that. Yeah. There, Go ahead, Chief. Just one more. One more point. Uh, we haven't had anybody uh, call out sick because of mold or any of those issues from that station. No, I I understand that, and uh, uh, still the uh, council members expressed concern as well during a meeting. Mm -hmm. And I want to sure that we do everything we possibly can to right. uh, remedy, right. remedy whatever is wrong. Right. And we will. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. All right. That brings us to Assistant Chief uh, Conti. Uh, I'm sorry. Uh, uh, <laughs> uh, Lord. Okay. Pardon me. Yes, Assistant okay. Chief of Fire Chief Operations. Go ahead. <laughs> yes. Good afternoon, Mayor, Commissioners. Welcome, okay. Commissioner Dixon. Thank you. Under operations uh, report, uh, the first three items on your agenda there, A through C, are all structure fires that occurred during the month of April. Uh, the first two were mutual aid to Rowayton, and the third was here in Norwalk on Tyrone Drive. Um, but I call your, your attention to item B, which was a structure fire on Crest Road in Rowayton. Uh, we responded mutual aid to Rowayton as, as we normally do for structure fires there. Um, our companies arrived on scene first. Uh, it was uh, it was a serious fire. There was one civilian injury there. Uh, there was also a Rowayton volunteer that was injured at that fire. Uh, and it was that incident that really prompted um, item D under the report, which was a meeting that we held uh, with the admin at the Rowayton Volunteer Fire Department, their chief and one of their captains, to discuss uh, Norwalk's response to fires in Rowayton. And in that meeting, both sides agreed to up our response to possible structure fires in that district to make sure that we get adequate personnel, adequate fire apparatus on scene in a timely fashion to assist the Rowayton volunteers. And uh, so that agreement was made. Uh, we changed that, um, that ticket in the uh, dispatch office. And we will be sending uh, basically a full assignment down to Rowayton in the in the instance that they have a possible structure fire call there. Yeah, uh, that's been a concern of mine for a while too, because of the uh, something happens two or three o'clock in the morning, and obviously a volunteer fire department is going to uh, have a, a little bit longer of a response because people have to get up, get dressed, get out of their house, and get down there in their own cars or get over to the fire in their own cars. Mm -hmm. uh, so I, I I appreciate that you did that. And I think we have to really, uh, and I'll defer to the experts, that we have to uh, do everything we can to up our response and to make sure that we get an appropriate response down there for any fires because, you know, that, that it's loss of life, loss of property. So uh, I appreciate that you've done that. Maybe we can continue that discussion and see if there's anything else we can do. Absolutely. And, and, you know, we're fortunate. We have a very good working relationship with, uh, with their chief down there, chief decline, um, good working relationship with their personnel. So really, you know, after this fire, which, you know, in the end, the, the, the fire was handled and, and, and the fire went out, we took care of the situation. Um, we had a unified command down on Crest Road with them, but, you know, it, it was, it was a, an, an instance where, you know, we needed to look at that response and make sure that we were getting everybody there fast enough to handle any any type of future fire uh, safely and efficiently. So uh, that's been put in place. And of course, uh, many fires in the future, I'll be sure to report on. Okay, that's great. Yeah, it, it's something that's been needed for a while. Uh, I also think that um, we should keep the uh, six taxing district commissioners um, updated as well. And I can make sure that we do that. 
Sure, that that sounds good. Uh, and then the file, the final item, item E on my report um, was we did have an after action review after the uh, the tanker and bridge fire on ninety five with the uh, the shift officers who were working for that incident. Uh, we got some good feedback and some good commentary from that, uh, and so we will be putting together a detailed report um, as far as an after action on that incident, and uh, we'll have more details on that incident included in next month's agenda. I also know there's a, an after action review scheduled for St. Anne's Club. Correct. On yes. the 30th, uh, we will be getting all the agencies that uh, that responded to that incident together at St. Anne's to do uh, you know a larger scoped after action review. Great. And uh, if I'm going to check with legal, I don't think it would be a meeting if we had the commissioners there, as long as we're not taking any action. It's mm -hmm. just informative. So uh, I'd like to see if the commissioners would uh, like to sit in on it. I think it's something that uh, would be a learning uh, experience for them. Uh, what date is that? That's going to be on the 30th of this month. May 30th? Yes. Duh. Right now it's from 10 until 2 o'clock. 2 o'clock? Okay. Yeah, if you can send us an invite, that would be great. Will do. Okay. Uh, and then uh, as quickly under calls for the, for the month of April, I'll just run through. Uh, we had 662 incidents, so average just over 22 incidents per day. We had 24 fire calls, including four building fires, 37 rescues, uh, 31 of those being motor vehicle accidents. Great. We responded to 394 EMS calls, 30, 30 hazardous conditions, including 16 natural gas or LPG leaks, 27 service calls, 102 fire alarms, and 48 uh, good intent calls. So looking at this year so far, January through the end of April, we are at 2,565 total incidents and 3,986 total responses. And I can take any questions on those reports. Commissioners, Denise? Uh, no, no questions. So. Thank you. Uh, you, you. Would you uh, just explain for uh, Commissioner Dixon what a, a good intention report is or a, a call? Yeah, so the good intent category on on the call report are calls that uh, that the the caller has the intention that there might be an emergency, so they call nine one one. But then it often we'll get there, and it it won't be what the caller thought. So an example would be a smoke scare or an odor of smoke, where someone calls in smoke coming from their neighbor's house, and we get there, and it turns out to be a fire pit in the backyard. Or, you know, something where someone thinks they see see some hazardous materials on the ground or, or a puddle, they're not sure what it, it is, and we go there and we find that it isn't actually hazardous materials. Um, sometimes we'll go and we find no incident at all at the address. So all of those types of calls generally go into that category of good intent. Thank you. Okay, any other questions? Okay, no. that, brings us, that brings us to the fire marshal's report. Uh, do we have anybody on for fire marshal the chief uh we're supposed to have kirk mcdonald i can't believe he's not here let's let me give him a quick call all right well let's move on while we're waiting for him we'll move on to uh emergency management Ms. Luca. great thank you welcome commissioner um thank you. so we are actually working on our extreme heat air quality annex update um, so we've had two meetings with health department, risk management, a few others, uh, working on the updated plan, and we'll get that out. Um, again, we know it's going to be a hot summer, so higher than normal temperatures, ex especially later in the summer. So we want to make sure that we're all on the same page as far as communication, everything else, some of the messaging, see what we can do as far as templates. So again, should we get into another heat wave, um, it'll make it a little bit easier that everybody knows their their pieces. Um, hurricane season is June 1st. So we'll send out some messages to the group emergency management, as well as our community partners, just to help them encourage clients, staff, families um, to improve their preparedness. 
again, also expecting an above normal hurricane season this year. So, okay. Um, I know we'll talk more about the bridge fire at next month's meeting, but I did want to mention I've been in communication with the state of Connecticut uh, regarding SBA assistance. So as a, it, it looks like we really did not have any impact to businesses. So the threshold for offering SBA probably would not be met. Um, normally it's about a two week plus period when businesses are closed. That really wasn't the, the case with the bridge fire. Um, if anything, some of the local businesses probably had more uh, foot traffic. So for the most part, again, I can double check, but um, I don't think that really is an avenue we need to go down for SBA, but we are still trying to see what financial assistance we might be able to receive as a municipality versus DOT receiving assistance from the Federal Highway Administration to at least cover the costs, because I know PD especially incurred <coughs> um overtime traffic management and some other expenses. Right. Um, and I did want to say thank you, Mayor, um, for your help getting the St. Anne's Club for us. Um, again, DOT really tries to hold the after action events within the municipality. Um, so having Irene and others um, make the connection, help us get that for May 30th, uh, really meant a lot to us. Okay. Yeah. Did I help getting St. Anne's Club? I don't recall. I think Irene did it all. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so I won't take credit unless the credit to do. So perfect. Um, yeah. And then I think again, I will we'll try to do some smaller AAR after action, maybe internally with some of the departments before the May 30th. Uh, just so again, we have some of our own notes. But if not, um, we will try to do something with other departments afterwards. Okay. Any questions from the commission? No questions. Thank you, Michelle. No. Great, thank you. Mr. Mayor, uh, Kirk uh, McDonald, the assistant fire marshal is here now. He was having some trouble with his computer, so he's gonna, I'm gonna switch places with him and he can give his report. All right, welcome to the club. Something's wrong with mine too. I think maybe <laughs> maybe that, uh, that sudden flares or something <laughs> are starting to hit us, but anyway. <laughs> Yes, uh, so go go ahead, uh, uh, Fire Marshal McDonald. Thank you, uh, Mr. Mayor, Commissioners. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. So looking at the summary uh, of um, statistics for the month of April compared to the month of March, uh, all the categories were down. Um, inspections uh, were at this month uh, 187 compared to 233. Uh, notifications down a little bit to 18. Our public education events, we had uh, two at three three different locations. We had uh, fire extinguisher training for the sta construction staff of the, uh, the new walk bridge project, as well as for the staff at the Keystone House. We had uh, 18 plan reviews, totaling $1,500 and two liquor licenses totaling 130. Total income for the month for the fire marshal's office is 1630. Uh, I said the number of uh, all categories were down. Well, fortunately that included the number of fires. Mm -hmm. Fire marshal's office was uh, called to investigate four building fires, two car fires, and three outside fires. Uh, we had no calls for code issues or violation or hazards, I should say. Um, we continued our drive of the inspecting the uh, mega multifamily structures, such as the Avalons, the Waypoints, those. Um, we did four of those sites, totaling 17 buildings and 605 apartments. Uh, those sites were the Merritt River Apartments platform at Sono on Chestnut Street, uh, Harborside Sono on Water Street, as well as the entire Monterey Village complex. And again, that totaled uh, 605 apartments. Um, 
So that was pretty much the statistics for the month of uh, April. Um, I did like to or want to make mention that uh, our own Deputy Fire Marshal George Baez was honored at uh, a Mets game last month at City Field. And there is uh, actually a video and a uh, picture link included. Um, it was very honorable, I think, uh, for him to be brought out on the field and uh, given a ceremonial flag and uh, put up on the Jumbotron. It just, I appreciate those places that recognize our veterans for their service. Very good. Quite an honor. Indeed. Did the Mets at least win? They did. Okay. <laughs> uh, it, could you give uh, Commissioner Dixon just a brief overview of the kinds of inspections that the fire marshal's office does? Certainly. So uh, broken down in simple terms, there's basically residential and commercial. Um, residential is basically anything three family and up and commercial encompasses uh, everything from liquor license inspections to um, new properties that uh, basically need to get inspected prior to being issued their certificate of, of occupancy to operate. So it's really a vast uh, array of uh, inspections types. But uh, again, the in simplest terms, it's residential, which is the three family and up. Fire Marshal's office has a limited jur jurisdiction in one and two family, and that's basically limited to uh, smoke alarms and egress. Excellent. Much needed. Indeed. Thank you. Thank you. Any other Any questions? Um, I have a question on Fire Marshal. I, I, we received a, a letter of um, retirement uh, from um, Fire Marshal Broderick. And I wanted to officially thank him uh, uh, publicly for his loyal service, uh, for the recommendations and, and interest in helping everyone uh, that he met. Uh, I really appreciate the, that aspect of, uh, of his service to the community and to the department. Wanted to congratulate him, wish him the best on, on his retirement, and also had a question to see if there were any plans uh, before his last day on May 31st. Uh, Commissioner, his last day is actually June uh, 20th. Oh, June 20th. Okay, his letter uh, said be, uh, May 31st. Yeah. He'll be on vacation until then. Oh, he'll be on vacation until then? Yeah. Right. I, I echo the Commissioner's uh, thoughts and okay. uh, comments because uh, Fire Marshal uh, Sawyer has been very instrumental, not only in outreach, but training programs for mm -hmm. uh, different organizations. Uh, and uh, I know they appreciate all he did and uh, he'll be missed, but I know that uh, we'll have staff ready, willing and able to take over where he leaves off. We're, we're in good hands. Yes. Uh, Indeed. That and that's not an all state commercial. <laughs> Indeed. That's, that, that's very nice uh, to say though. And uh, I thank you. Yep. And, uh, and those will be big shoes to fill. Yeah. And then just one of my, um, my favorite experiences as a fire commissioner was going out on a, a call with the fire marshal to uh, to do a home inspection. Uh, so I highly encourage uh, that to uh, you know to all of the other commissioners uh, to consider uh, engaging with our the various parts of our department. Well, we haven't told Commissioner Dixon that his next uh, thing that he has to do is control the back of the ladder truck as it's going to a call. <laughs> <laughs> it gets complicated. I'm used to a noseful, I'm used to noseful steering in a tiller, but uh, I know I went where I wanted it to go. <laughs> hey, if you can fly a jet, you can fly, you can run that. <laughs> okay, uh, moving on to the training division report, Deputy Chief Coppola. In case you haven't noticed, I'm back on. My computer got fixed. See, it looks good. <laughs> oh, thanks. <laughs> Good afternoon, Mayor. Good afternoon, uh, Commissioner Destruge, and welcome, Commissioner Dixon. Thank you. Uh, my uh, report for the month, uh, current training activities. Um, we're currently conducting hazardous materials operational refresher. Uh, I'm doing that by doing a continuing education unit process, meaning that we use company drills toward the hours they're required uh, by OSHA to keep up with that uh, level of 
uh, certification that our members hold. Uh, we are ongoing uh, uh, training with um, the, the tiller trucks, uh, truck one and two. Uh, we are in the process of putting some new people on. So with transfers, that requires us to uh, make uh, some new drivers ready to go, uh, especially for the summer months. So that's ongoing. Uh, we had a couple of members who were out of work for a while, uh, and they actually missed our uh, winter EMS refresher, EMT and EMR. And I was able to get uh, online classes for those guys to make up the refresher while they're in their stations, which uh, it's great. It's a great thing to do uh, when you have a few people, but when you have, you can't really do it that way for an entire, uh, you know, department because it's just way too much, uh, you know, monitoring who's doing what and when. So we were able to do that. Uh, the Marine company is ongoing with uh, Marine operations. They're doing uh, deck operations and they're practicing the use of navigational technologies. Uh, we are uh, part of part of the training division and safety is also uh, providing the annual physicals and the annual physicals are in full swing. We're about halfway through the department. Uh, we're using Hartford Healthcare, um, who is our new provider and the physicals have been very thorough. Uh, and the members have been very pleased with the uh, with the service they got there, which is quite different from the past. So um, very, very pleased with the level of service I get as the person in charge of making sure the physicals are getting done. Um, any last minute scratches I have to make are always accommodated rapidly. Uh, and any phone calls I make uh, are answered right away. Um, we had a guy today get his DOT, uh, went for his physical and he needed a DOT physical as well. And I made an error and I didn't check off that box uh, on the physical. And he called me from the office and they were able to, um, through the use of just emailing a quick uh, um, referral, uh, able to get him that physical while he was there. So it saved us time. So really been very pleased with them. Uh, we are ongoing. Uh, we use the... Uh, Fire Department standby connection at the River Street parking garage to practice high rise operations, as well as a uh, pump operator to uh, learn, you know, to to practice and um, become proficient in using the fire department connection on buildings. Uh, it's not an easy thing to get a training site for. And uh, I have a contact over at River Street Garage, uh, Rocky. Uh, he's been really accommodating uh, with us for that. Uh, we completed ICS 400 um, at the Deerfield Fire School. That was myself, Firefighter Pete Chilla, Lieutenant Jim Lyons, and Michelle DeLuca. Uh, we we used our um, our prop, our pitched roof ventilation prop, uh, over at the shop, and I attached a photo of the members doing that, um, so you can see what that mm -hmm. is. A um, little little confusing. If you have any questions on that, I could clarify. Uh, the rescue company has been practicing using the tripod and our hydrofusion struts. I can also explain that. Uh, those are uh, basically lifting struts that we lift heavy machinery, trucks, uh, off of cars, things like that. Um, we completed a person in the water drill with Middlesex Chambro construction at the Walk Bridge site. Uh, several of our members were uh, attended a seminar from Deputy Chief Mike Turpak from Jersey City Fire Department. He's a well-known speaker. Uh, on the speaking circuit in the fire service and Stanford paid to have him come in for um, several, several for every every company officer in the department uh, on a, over a four day period, one day each uh, uh, each shift. And they invited us to send as many as we wanted. And we uh, I went myself. It was fantastic. And uh, we had a couple of our members go to that. So we have a great working relationship with Stanford. Um, and I have even more to report on that in the coming months. So lots of good stuff. And uh, we uh, absolutely are aware of what happened with our situation on 95. So uh, operating foam streams is always at the, um, you know, top of our, uh, of our list. And I actually ha did some training on operating foam stream prior to the bridge accident. So we, our members were very ready to go when that happened. Um, and then upcoming, we have a tabletop exercise at King Industries. Uh, that's coming up in June. It's a tanker versus train at the crossing. Uh, that's going to be a tabletop exercise. Uh, probationary class graduates tomorrow, three members. Uh, and we started orientation week Thursday uh, with um, those three and the five laterals. Uh, we have a host, we're hosting a pump operator class coming up. That's at the end of this month, which is only next week, basically. Um, 
I'm looking into a fire officer one certification contract cost for our members to have here in Norwalk, and I'm tentatively scheduling that for the fall of 2024. Uh, we're going to be doing some drafting, meaning we're going to be pulling water out of a uh, pond to uh, practice pumping that water onto a uh, onto a fire in the event that we don't have a hydrant nearby. And um, Norwalk High School and Wegmans construction sites invited us to do walkthroughs uh, of their sites. And uh, as they progress through the construction process, I'm going to schedule that. Uh, and then one last thing, uh, I just wanted to note, um, I got an email from one of our members. Uh, a while ago, I recommended uh, our members use a, a free training website called cfitrainer.net. And uh, we were able to save a lot of uh, funds uh, from the educational reimbursement account for members taking degree programs by the members being able to utilize credit hours obtained through CFI Trainer Net. Uh, in one case, Lieutenant Rywalt was able to get free eight free elective credits for his degree, thus bringing his needed credits um, down to 13 from almost 45, resulting in a huge savings department. And, and there were several other things involved in that. It's not just that, but. Good. Uh, we constantly encourage members to take advantage of these uh, free online training opportunities. So I will clarify anything, uh, Commissioner Dixon, if you have any questions. I know there's a lot thrown at you there, um, but uh, it's all good stuff. And the training division is very, very busy. Understand. All set. Okay. I'm always impressed with the the level of training that our firefighters get and the day we had the bridge fire uh or not the bridge fire but the tanker fire under the bridge uh they responded and knew what they had to do and they did it and uh that's a testament to their training and their experience mm -hmm. and their dedication so we really appreciate it uh, also i did send a, a certificate of thanks to king industries for responding with their foam truck uh because that was a, a big big help uh, during that uh, incident Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah, and then we we've gotten several phone calls. I've gotten several phone calls from people I know in the in the uh, in the fire service. You know, being an instructor for the fire academy, uh, asking us about what happened, and also commenting on on the uh, solid work that was done by our members. So it wasn't just us tooting our own horns. It was definitely mm -hmm. noted by outside agencies how smoothly that operation went. So we were pretty proud of that. Absolutely. Any other questions for uh, Deputy Chief Capola? No, thank you for your extensive and uh, very informative report. Really appreciate it. Thank you for saying that. I appreciate it. Okay, so we now um, go to the correspondence, Chief. Uh, just one letter. Um, there was an incident in I-95, um, a mother and her 18-year-old, 18-month-old mm -hmm. um, daughter. Um, there was a call where Engine 3 from East Norwalk uh, responded. Um, whatever the situation in that particular time, she was a little bit upset. Um, they took, you know, professionally with their, their response and self-dedication. So she was all very thankful for everything that was done. And she dropped off some small treats for the guys over there at station three. So I just wanted to, that's included in the, in the back of your packet, the, mm -hmm. the letter from her. Very good. It's always nice when somebody takes the time to write. Yeah. Yes, it is. Any further comments by the commission or no. personnel? No. Okay, so I will entertain at this point a motion to adjourn. Mm, so moved. So, uh, uh, the next movie, uh, next movie, <laughs> the next <laughs> meeting, next meeting is June 18th, I believe, at uh, three o'clock. Okay, we have, oh, sorry. We have, we have, have a second second session. executive meeting. You have what? I'm sorry, uh, Chief. We have an executive meeting. Sorry. When? I think now. Right now. Today. It's not on my agenda. Oh. Should be. It is oh. on the agenda. I, I'm looking at mine. I got 13, yeah, 14, number and 15. Four, number 14, executive session, firefighter grievance. Okay. Mine says personnel issue, no items. Personnel, no, there are no items. Oh, this okay. is a revised one. It was, yeah, it was revised. It's not going to take long if you have time. Okay, well, I'll have to find if I have the uh, the other Zoom meeting login. So I'll leave this. And uh, who sent the uh, executive Linda session? Linda? Okay. Linda did. I'm All going right, so, to send it to you, Mayor, right now. Okay. okay. So, Commissioner Dixon, we have to leave this meeting.
we have to get on your email and find the uh, link to the executive session website uh, or Zoom meeting. We'll be there. Then we come out of executive session and we come back to this meeting. Okay. 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 I'll Thank see you, you soon. Uh, Mr. Mayor, before we adjourn, can I add a point? Um, I'm sorry. Um, Greg Saunders, uh, pastor of um, Community Baptist Church. Com Commissioner, to Commissioner, let me finish this first. I have to. Okay. We came out of executive session at 359. During executive session, no motions were made and no votes were taken. Okay, Commissioner. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Um Greg Saunders, uh, pastor of uh, Community uh, Baptist uh, up East Avenue, wanted to throw in his name uh, to uh, to be considered as a uh, fire chaplain. Okay. Would you have him send his resume to us? Okay, we'll do. And we'll take a look. And uh, how many fire chaplains do you have now? I, I know you have Reverend Curtis, I believe. You're, you're on mute, Chief. Okay. Um, I'm not sure if Reverend Curtis is ours, believe it or not. Um, we have Father Jeff uh, Couture. Couture, yep. Mm -hmm. We have uh, Don Burr. Um, we have our Commissioner De Struge. <laughs> well. um, I think that's, well, I think that's about all of them. Yeah, I don't think there's any limit. Um, no. Mm -hmm. Nothing covered no. in the charter. So if somebody wants to volunteer their time, I very rarely say no. 
Mm -hmm. so. Right. If you could send me all that information, I could reach out to them. We'll do. I'll have them uh, put together the resume. Okay. I need a motion to adjourn. So moved. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. We are adjourned at 4 p.m. Thank you and uh, okay. appreciate it. Take care. Okay. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you, everyone.